Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The names are Charlie and Sandy, Camille and Andrew and Katrina. And last year the names were Harvey and Maria and Emily. All devastating hurricanes that destroyed property, took lives from New York State all the way down the coast to Florida, to New Orleans, to Houston and Texas. Devastating storms. Or maybe I say Joplin, Missouri, or Flint, Michigan, or Waco, Texas. Deadly tornadoes have touched our land as the devastated homes took lives, left houses down to the ground. Or maybe I might say Cedar Rapids, Iowa in 2008, where we, the water was coming up First Avenue. Ten, mi ten square miles of floodwaters. Devastated homes took lives. What a storm. Or maybe I'd say, as I can tell you, in 203 and 207, fires that raged through California and took over 200 homes and took lives. Some of my good friends in California lost their homes. Devastating storms. I'm sure you have went through a storm or two in your life. Maybe you were affected by the floods in 2008. Maybe you have a storm, maybe not a hurricane or a tornado. Maybe you have a storm in your life of, say, an illness. Or maybe death is close by. Or maybe there's a relationship problem you're dealing with. Maybe it's your own sin that has a storm come up in your life. I wonder as I think about the hurricanes, the tornadoes, the floods, and the fires. Did anybody stop afterwards and say, God, don't you care? Don't you care about what I'm going on in my life today? See, that was our text this morning. The disciples were out in the lake. The water was rushing into the boat. And they woke up Jesus, who was at peace on the cushion, and said to him, Don't you care that we're perishing? But you see, Jesus was right there. Jesus was there to take care of all things. He was at peace. Some of us, even today, might say, God, don't you care? I pray, brothers and sisters in Christ, that before you leave this morning, you will realize all that Christ has done for you because he loves you. He sent his son to die for you and he forgives all your sins and that before you leave, you will know how much he cares. Let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Ever been out fishing? Ever been out in the lake? Fishing and just enjoying yourself to abundance? And all of a sudden, out of the skies, you see some lightning. And all of a sudden, then a little bit later, you hear the thunder. And you're out in the middle of the lake, and you know you got to get in. And you've only got a little 15 to 25 horse motor on the lake. I can vouch for it because I've been there. And then trying to get back to shore before it got too bad. And the wind started blowing. And by the time you got in, there were some white caps on the lake. A little terrifying situation it came about. But as I look at our text this morning, I think about our disciples. Think about some of those disciples. They were fishermen. I mean, this is how they made their living. 
And so they were out on the lake, and I'm sure at the first clap of thunder, they just didn't jump and head for shore. But I wonder why this time. This time it got to be a little bit more than they could handle. Been there? Maybe a storm comes into your life and you can't seem to handle what's going on. I know I'm speaking to the choir this morning. I know if I went around the church this morning, you'd all say, well, of course, pastor. I would go to God. I would go to Jesus. But do we? Do we go to our Savior who is there for us? Who wants to take care of our storms? Who wants to be with us as we go through those storms? Or do we chance, oh, maybe the world can give me a little bit more. Can give me a little bit more comfort. The disciples were at their wit's end going through their storm. And so what did they do? Here was Jesus asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up, probably a little frustrated, probably a little rebuking. Don't you care that we're perishing? Look at what's happening in their life. Here's the one that can help us, help them, and yet they're in a rebuking tone. But you see, don't at times we do the same. At times... When things come up in our lives, we reach out at times and accuse others of our problems. I mean, think about you're fearing an illness, or maybe death is close by. Do we get frustrated with family or friends, maybe the medical staff, or maybe we give an accusing note to our Lord himself? How about the storms of married life. At times, I'm sure in everybody's case, I know it's been in mine, once in a while my wife and I don't always agree. And so at times we have to stop and talk. And a storm brews up and we need to go to God for help. Or maybe as in the world today, our finances don't seem to go as far as we think. Or maybe Our job is we get laid off. Or maybe as a retirement, our retirement income is a little low. Maybe, again, as I said, we're dealing with a specific sin in our life. Sin can be so devastating and bring such storms into our life that we don't know where to turn. We don't know what to do next. And the world continues to bring us down. And at times, we become impatient with God. We become because we want results right now. We want them to act right now. And I pray when we become impatient with God, the first words out of our mouth is not some expectative. And yet, even in our quiet brooding, is God the victim? What happens when we don't go to God the first thing? Is it a lack of faith, as he told his disciples? Is that the center of us not turning to God? Remember, Jesus was present right there in the boat with the disciples. But Jesus is also present here. Did you walk in this morning and see the baptismal font? Did you remember that you were baptized into Christ? That you were made a new creation that you are washed clean, and you wear the robe of righteousness around you. And he calls you by name through your baptism. In a little bit, you'll come and kneel at his rail, and you'll partake of his very body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins and the strengthening of your faith. See, he's right here. And as you open up his word, his word gives you strength, gives you guidance as you read it, as you meditate on it as it follows your life. See, Jesus is right here with us. And he was at peace in the boat. Because you see, he always has everything under control. But Jesus spoke those perfect words. What did he say? Peace. Be still. 
See, that's what he's saying to you and I this morning. Peace, be still. He said, I will be with you, as Matthew 28 says. I will be with you until the very end. I will always be there in your storms. And Psalm 46 tells us, be still and let me be God. See, so often, no matter whether we're in storms or what's happening in our life, we want to keep going and going and going, and we don't stop to listen. We don't stop to listen to what God has to say for us. Peace I leave with you, he says. And I think of the fruits of the Spirit. Peace is one of those. See, Jesus was that peace, and he wants to give that peace to you and I. He is with you in all your storms. But many of you are wondering, where is the peace in my life today? The peace that passes all understanding we will have when we see Jesus face to face in heaven. But what do we do now? What do we do now as we wait for his return? We wait to go and be face to face with him. As we deal with the world, as we deal with temptation, as we deal with sin, as we deal with the storms in our life. He's provided that for us. Where are you at this morning? Are you not in God's house? As you came today to worship and praise our God? And as you look around, look around and you see other brothers and sisters in Christ. And they're there for you. As see, Christ came to you. You're there for other brothers and sisters. You're called to lift each other's burdens. Lift each other up in their storms. See, that's why God brought you here this morning. Christ brought you here. He's providing for you for all of your needs. All that he gave you. But one of the greatest gifts he gave you this morning is that, did you remember? We came and started a service and we confessed our sins. And those words he gave us to us, your sins are forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, your sins are remembered no more. See, even in your storms, he's there for you, to forgive you, to love you, and to care for you. So you see, he's always there. He's always there to love you and care for you. And the greatest gift God gave us was that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved as you name each person here. God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But you see, Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. And so you see, God sent his son for you and for me. See, he really cares. He loves you. He died for you. And he puts his arms around you in your storms. And so, as we deal with our storms, let us care and love one another. For Christ came and forgave you, we're to forgive one another. As Christ loved you, we're to love one another. And as Christ cares for us, we're to care for one another. Do you think he cares? Absolutely. Our Savior Jesus Christ cares so much, and he will be with you to the very end of age. May you be blessed by that this day and forevermore. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Amen.